the big thing about Spider-Verse was I had finally gotten an opportunity. I'd waited years and years. Like you said, I made video games, I was making commercials, I was moonlighting, trying to do film, trying to do film. And I finally got an opportunity to work on a film. And I could see right away the potential of this project. It was, it had heart, it had soul, it had style. Uh, it embraced the, um, the artistry of the filmmaker, not just the final product. And so when I saw the opportunity there, I just went for it. I was like, this is everything I could have ever asked for. <laughs> My name is Miles Morales. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. And things are going great. Oh yeah, you were supposed to be here five. All right, whatever. Whatever? Wow. Whatever? So are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the spot. <laughs> it's not funny. Don't, don't do that. Miles' grades are pretty good. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. And a B in Spanish. What? Ooh, okay. Miles. Are you trying to Mira, that's what he will see. I gotta go. All right, everybody. Bye. He's lying to you. And I think you know it. I understand that your wife read the script to you while you were moving from San Francisco to LA in a huge U-Haul uh, truck. It wasn't that huge because we didn't have that much, but um, it's about a seven hour drive from Oakland to LA. And um, I had, uh, it was Sunday, Monday morning, I was gonna be going in to what I already knew was gonna be a huge opportunity. It's a Spider-Man, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a big film. And so um, I gave the script to my wife and she was reading it, reading it to me while we were driving down the, the I-5 on our way to LA. and. Um, I didn't think about it at the time, of course, because you're in the moment, you're driving a giant U-Haul. I only learned how to drive a few years previously, so I was nervous. And, and she's reading the script, and I'm super engaged in it, but it, it is sort of this Hollywood story now that I think about it, you know, this immigrant Hollywood story of us ripping down the I-5 while she's reading me the f script to the film that would end up really launching my career. But do you remember how you reacted to, to, to what she was reading. Yes, it was very distracting because the script was so engaging and I would be driving this big U-Haul and looking over like, what? Are you kidding me? Um, and it was very in, in, engaging, you know? It was, and something I bet, I think about her reading it to me, um, I, I, I have a bit of a learning disability uh, and always sort of struggled reading. And so um, I love audiobooks. They allow me to basically, I'm highly visual. Obviously, yeah. yes. <laughs> and so it's not the last time my wife has read me a script because it allows me to sort of, I can close my eyes and be in the movie theater while hearing it. Um, often while reading, I get too tripped up with the visuals. So, so, but it was distracting, of course, I'm driving down the road. While she was reading the script, did, did images of what was supposed to be the film already flowed through your mind? And did any of those images sort of end up in the film as well? Nothing so one-to-one, -one, but what became apparent was my connection to the character. This is about a kid growing up in the city, and that was my immediate connection to it. I'm actually less of a Spider-Man fan than I am a Miles Morales fan. Um, he's the character that really keeps me motivated into this film um, and into this, this now soon-to-be trilogy. Um, he's a kid growing up in the city. Um, he loves graffiti. He's passionate about art. Um, like I said, I, I had just learned how to drive. I didn't learn how to drive until my 30s because I grew up in the city in Toronto, which is a great stand-in for New York. And in fact, a lot of the um, New York City, especially in the first film, is based off of Toronto <laughs> because it's just what I know, right? I always try to go with what I know. If I don't know it, I can't represent it properly and I can't put it in the film. Um, so the, it's less so a specific image, but an emotionality. And I would, I see images and um, the images become highly flexible, but there's an emotionality to them that I attach myself to. And that becomes the driving point. Wait, 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 hold on. There's an elite society with all the best fighter people in it? Okay, so there's this lady, Jess Drew. Uh -huh. She rides a motorcycle. motorcycle. Oh my gosh, I'm learning so much from her. Oh yeah, I, I've learned a lot of stuff too. I've leveled up my whole thing. See? I was about oh to yeah? Give all of me uh, all let's see that. Let's go. Thread the needle. Over my ears, falling on my head, but all of my feels were already dead. And Whoa. if I could remind you, if you could remind me of what I felt before. <laughs> and Miguel, the whole thing was his idea. Right. And who's Miguel? 
Oh, he's like a ninja vampire Spider-Man, but a good guy? A vampire good guy. I'd pay good money to see that. So how long ago did they invite you? Uh, only like a few months ago. Months is kind of a long time, isn't it? Okay, this one counts for two. All of my feels were already dead. And if I could rewind, if I if you could rewind, what I felt before I felt Look at you. Look at me. Your role changed from Into the Spider-Verse to uh, Across the Spider-Verse. You, you became the production designer you wanted to be. But for the, for the people who don't really know what the difference is between art direction and production design, maybe you can explain a little? Sure. Um, on the first film, I did eventually become an art director. Um, there were two of us um, under the production design of Justin K. Thompson, who's uh, my mentor. Um, as well as good friend and now director of the sequel. Um, and he really showed me the ropes. And so he eventually brought me on as the art director of design, environment design. So on the first film, I was primarily concerned with the environments, set dressing, um, and the, the, the general look of the film, but not the overall vision. Taking on the role of production designer on the second film, it's my first time production designing, it's a very ambitious film. Um, the thing that struck me it, at first, you know, later all those little details come, but at first your responsibility is working with the directors and in this case the producers because uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, our producers, are very involved with the filmmaking and creating a vision for this film. I, uh, as the production designer, the production designer, at the end of the day is responsible for the, the look of the entire film and its, um, and its arrival on screen. And so digging really deep into story and really deep into character and starting to understand um, how to craft a world that is truly going to resonate with the story. You and me, it's... We're the same. In the important ways, you know. <laughs> In every other universe, Gwen Stacy falls for Spider-Man. And in every other universe, it doesn't end well. Well, it's the first time for everything, right? <laughs> Let's look at one of the money shots, if you ask me. Sure. It's uh, when uh, Miles and Gwen are hanging upside down and looking at, <laughs> you, you know the shot? Yeah. Looking at nighttime New York. Yeah. Maybe you can talk about where did that scene start and, and how did it end up on the screen as we see it and your own <clears throat> personal role in, in getting it like that? Sure. We have this saying on the film, nobody wants to watch Spider-Man walk down the street. And uh, it's something that Phil and Chris and uh, Justin um, constantly say, anytime we're playing it too straight. We have this opportunity because they are spider people to orient the world in any direction we want. Um, we want to turn the world on its head. Um, once COVID ended, I took a trip to Brooklyn and was doing a lot of location scouting. I was there for an art show of mine and um, started to really feel out Brooklyn. You know, I said in the first film, it was a lot of Toronto because I didn't know New York. In the second film, uh, I got to know Brooklyn a lot more and we wanted Brooklyn to be more represented. And so it's actually based on the Williamsburg, Williamsburg Bank Tower in uh, Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Um, although we had to augment it and change it so we could, you know, get those shots. In terms of the lighting, um, that was very, very important to me was to capture not the perfect, beautiful sunset that you'd typically find in, I think, in most animated films, but um, that transition from, from day to night that is not perfect, but is that quiet moment that we sometimes get um, together while moving through the city. And this is a movie full of loud moments, and yet this moment between Gwen and Miles is this peaceful, existence. It's one of the few in the film and certainly one of the few in their lives where they're going to get a quiet moment together. So we wanted this nice, quiet, 
beautiful, um, beautiful moment with the, um, the, their responsibilities off in the distance, right? We have the city behind them um, and they're looking over the, what is their responsibilities as, as these spider people. Spider-Woman. Me too. Uh, are you, uh... Oh, this? We don't know the sex yet. My husband wants it to be a surprise. Uh, <laughs> he's really corny. <laughs> but so hot. Will you adopt me? What? 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 I don't know anything about motorcycles. I don't drive a motorcycle. Uh, I can couldn't name the parts of a motorcycle before making this film. Jessica Drew has this motorcycle. And it's a small part of the film. But I wanted, we all wanted to make sure that the audience member who knows everything about motorcycles will see the motorcycle on screen that makes sense, you know? And so one of our artists who's really a character painter um, is a big motorcycle head. And I just asked them, can you help us design this motorcycle? Can you, can you take a look at this and make sure, does this make uh, you as a motorcycle enthusiast feel seen and, and respected on screen? And that's just a small example of sort of the whole way through of every aspect of the film is turning to those that know, um, whether it's their culture, uh, their ethnicity, their background, or just their passion, and leaning on their expertise. So as a production designer, you know everything, right? <laughs> uh, no, what I know is I have the um, confidence to always ask for help. You've developed a bullshit detector. If people tell you stuff, you know it's from the heart <laughs> or not. I usually ask another, I, I double check my sources. <laughs> there might be, you know, several crew members that are of a particular ethnicity or culture or background or passion that have competing views. You know, there's no truth um, when it comes to the pers uh, personal experiences. Um, India, for example, you know, is, it's, it's not a monolith. This is a culture made up of, it's got, I think, over 40 different languages. You know, it's highly, highly multicultural. We have a lot of different Indian team members making the film. And there was often what could seem like conflicting views if we were trying to create a singularity. But what came out of that is, no, we're trying to express a highly, highly diverse culture. Uh, none of these are the right answer or the wrong, uh, none of these are the wrong answer, they're all the right answer. Let's get them all in there and make sure we express the diversity of ideas that we, even within the, the group of filmmakers um, which is barely enough to represent the culture at large. Huh? Miles? Hey, who's the new guy? I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm glad you asked, new guy. My name is Pravitra Prabhakar. I live in Mumbai. This is where the traffic is. This is also where the traffic is. There's traffic here, too. Being Spider-Man is so easy. I fight a few bad guys. Quick break for chai with my my auntie. I love chai tea. What did you just say? Chai tea? Chai means tea. You're saying tea tea. You've contributed many things to the films, but what have the films contributed to your life, do you say? Each film taught me one, one big lesson. The first film taught me that um, it's okay, it, it, it sort of gave me permission to be myself in my art, more so than I ever had. Um, that it's not about selling a product, it's not about making a creative director happy so much, um, that's not the first priority. Actually, those things will, are a byproduct of making something that is a, emotionally engaging. And the only way to make something emotionally engaging is to be honest with, your, with yourself and put yourself you know, exposed up on that screen. The second film, I think, represents a, a big leap from the first film um, in terms of its artistic complexities. I was nervous um, that it was you know, too intellectual, that it was too, we, is a Marvel, you know, is a Spider-Man movie really the place to sort of offer up an, you know, an MFA, a Master's of Fine Arts, uh, an art history degree to the audience. Is that, is this the right audience for, for that? You know, it's not, this is not an art house film, although we would often say this is bespoke 
art house blockbuster filmmaking while making it. Um, Phil Lord um, and, and, and Justin and our directors, Joachim and, and Kemp and, and Chris Miller um, and the studio taught me like, do not underestimate the audience. Do not underestimate their appetite and their, their acceptance of what we put on screen. And um, although I think we totally ended up there putting everything on screen as intended and going very far, I had anxi quite a lot of anxiety throughout the filmmaking process that I like this idea, but I'm an, it's, I'm an insider, you know? I know the art, I know the references, I know the call outs, I know the inspiration. Um, is this gonna resonate with a larger audience? And it did. And that was um, the biggest lesson I learned on this film is never underestimate the audience's appetite for, for an appreciation of the art form.